Perplexity just released their new search API, and it doesn't just give you stale links, it gives you clean AI ready answers. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to use it to get richer automations and even better vibe coded apps. I'm going to first demo the basics using AnyDen, and then I'm going to step it up and put it into practice by showing you an actual multi agent research workflow. And then to top it off, I'll walk you through an app I vibe coded in just 10 minutes using all the assets I'm going to give you by the end of this video completely for free. So whether you're technical or not, you'll be able to use and implement this to give your users or yourself a much richer search experience. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to add cutting edge real time search to anywhere you want. Let's dive in. So if you go into docs.perplexity.ai and go to getting started, you'll be able to see at the very bottom, we have a new search API documentation. And pretty much everything you'd need to actually use is right here in all these drop downs. So whether you want to find results, you want to chat with grounded search, you want to filter that search for specific domains or websites, you can click on this. And then if you want to structure the output, this one's super helpful. If you're vibe coding an app, instead of having the AI having to learn how it's structured in terms of the response, you can basically use your own schema or your own structure. So if you have an app waiting to organize the information in a certain way, you can dictate that structure every single time. And if that sounds like gibberish to you, then just stick with me. I'll walk you through some visual examples to put it all together. Hopping into our first basic workflow in edit N, I just basically added all the requests that we got from the documentation, whether it's a general request, a grounded search, an academic search, or a structured output. On the general search, it is blazing fast, and you'll see it right now when I run it. It is pretty much instant. Now when you run the instant, is it gonna give you perfect results every single time? No, but it will be really comparable to a lot of other instant search APIs like Google Search API and Exa. The one that takes the longest is the grounded search, which makes sense because it's actually trying to make sure that it's basing all the information it retrieves based on the citations it comes up with. And then we have academic, which on average will take anywhere between seven to 10 seconds. And this essentially allows you to tell it and dictate which websites it should prioritize. I would say it's not gonna only return those results from my testing. It will primarily put those ahead of others in terms of priority. So if you wanted to search some peer reviewed studies, you'd want to use the academic search version of this. And last but not least, we have the structured output, which is essentially the exact same thing of doing the instant search. But in terms of how the content, the answer to your question is structured, you can dictate exactly how it's organized. If we start from the left, if we go into instant, if we click on execute step right here, you'll see, like I said, blazing fast. If we just click on schema, you'll be able to see if we zoom in, this is the breakdown of the results. It comes back with a title, a URL, a snippet, the date, the last updated date, and you can basically peruse all the different results you get. And it'll usually come back with five to 10, depending on what you're looking for. Now, in terms of the request itself, all I did to make this work is I imported all the curl requests. If we wanna get a little technical for a second, where if you go to find results and you click on curl, if you just copy paste this into AnyDen's HTTP request, you'll be able to replicate this. But again, I'll make this template and the others I'll show you in this video available. So you can just plug and play. All you'll have to do is just replace my API key with yours. And I'm just going to delete this by the end of the video. In terms of the structure of the request, it's going to look very similar from version to version. I will point out the nuances though. So for this one, we're just sending three queries, which is what is Comet Browser, what is Perplexity AI, and Perplexity Changelog. And that's where we're getting each set of results based on those questions. So you can see right here, this is the first one and the associated responses. And then this is the second one. And then we have the third one right below. Now on the grounded search, if we execute this bad boy, again, similar structure. In this case, we just dictate what model we want. You can choose from, I believe, four models, Sonar, Sonar Pro, Sonar Pro Reasoning, and Deep Research. And then in terms of the content, it is hard coded here, but behind the scenes, you would be able to swap this out for a dynamic variable, whether it's a chat input or some form of webhook variable. The response from grounded search is a little bit different where it prioritizes citations and making sure that it's very comprehensive in those citations. And then you get the same search results that you got in the instant version. Now for academic search, again, looks very similar. If we go to the very bottom, this is where we select our model. We have our messages in role, we have our content, but you'll notice this brand new variable, which is web underscore search underscore options. And this is where you can do a domain filter on archive. And then you can even do a search recency filter as if you're doing this on an actual UI where you can click on Google, go to searches in the last year, put your query, and then you're good to go. And again, if we zoom in here, you're gonna see this is not perfect. 
So we definitely have some references to archive here, 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 and here, as well as here, but we do have some other sources. So we have YouTube, as well as machinelearningmastery.com. So it's not solely returning archive.org. It looks like it's just prioritizing that to pop up in the search results. But again, if you're trying to do very academic based searches or you want really well regarded and well cited sources, this is your best bet that's on the market that isn't some form of more expensive, a lot more latent deep research. And then finally, we have the structured output here where we click execute. In this case, this is a very verbose structure. This is the out of the box version of their documentation, but you can essentially dictate exactly what comes back. So you can see here in terms of variables, we have startups, we have company name, we have funding amount, focus area, and then you can basically tell it exactly what is required and what is optional. The response itself will look very similar to what we looked at before, but if you click on the JSON option and we zoom into the very bottom, you'll see it is segmenting the response itself that would come back from the language model with the funding amount, the company name, and everything else we asked for as well as focus area. So this is really powerful, again, for vibe coded apps, whether you're using browser based ones or things like Cursor, Cloud Code, or Windsor. So that was the foundational layer. This is an example of an application of it where I'm using all the different types of search that I showed you before. So we have the academic search, we have the practical search, and then one more on the innovative side where it's in between. And all we're doing to make this work is literally hooking up a main agent, hooking up some sub agents, the prompt of the main agent is the most important thing because the sub agent is just inheriting whatever is being sent to it via the chat trigger. And then all we have to do is make sure we have one ACP request per one we looked at here. Now the only version I don't have is the structured output, but you'll see that in my next example using cloud code. So if we just expose the very bottom and click on pop out panel, I will just put this at the very top. Okay. And then let's just extend it and let's say something like, can you go research the latest innovations in prompt engineering as of September 2025? And we send that over. This should send it from the primary agent to all the sub agents. Look at that. They're all not working together. They're all working in a silo, executing their own searches. And then we're retrieving that and having the main AI agent consolidate and synthesize it for you. So in terms of a response, we'll be able to get a much richer response here. And it might not say citations because I haven't asked for it in the prompt itself, but you can make it do that as well. And what's even cooler is you can find ways to trace exactly which part of the research came from which sub agent. So now we have a very structured and detailed synthesis of the key patterns and insights, different prompting methodologies, contradictions and debates. This is cool because now you, since language models are predictive in nature, they're not deterministic. So in a way it's like having an actual research team where each one goes on its own branch and researches the topic in different ways at different levels, focusing on different sources. And then it comes back where a master agent can consolidate all of them. Now in terms of the prompt itself, it's not groundbreaking. You basically have a user input right here and we're taking the variable from the chat trigger. And then we have the prompt basically say how it's going to delegate specific queries to each one of the agents, the academic agent, the practical agent and the innovation agent. And then this is the part where we tell it how to synthesize those responses by identifying key patterns and insights across all sources, highlighting any contradictions or debates, providing actual recommendations and explaining the reasoning behind major findings. And that's pretty much all you have to do if you want to build your own mini instant AI research army. And you can take this template, change the prompts using something like AI and make it for your specific use case and be out of the gate in minutes. So that's a few examples of how to use it in automation. Now, what happens if we want to vibe code an app and we want to do it in a really easy way. Now, if I pivot over to my friendly cloud code and you can execute this in whatever AI editor of choice you want. All I did is I created this perplexity search API documentation markdown file. If I double click it right here and I'll just remove this and extend that. You'll see it just walks through the release. Naturally, I had AI go and research this. It comes back with each curl request, every single parameter, an input, a walkthrough of the syntax as well as the walkthrough of the logic behind all the structure. So all I had to do in the actual search itself is I did slash initialize. And what slash initialize does again is it creates this markdown file for Claude that acts like a command center. And it basically pre reads and studies any asset I've put in there before I execute the request to basically get up to speed. So by doing that, I don't have to spoon feed it exactly every single way to connect to this API. It's basically studied it, 
so that when I give it this prompt that I provided right here, I said create a modern academic research web application using the Perplexity Search API, core requirements, I walk through what the UI should look like, the visual design, as well as that it should have dark mode and light mode. It walks through here. Naturally, again, I had Claude make this prompt for me to make this easier. I made it go into plan mode. It came back with a plan right here in terms of the structure. And all I did was approve that plan. So when I tell you this took minutes for me to generate, all I needed was the documentation. I let it go and then it came back with a link to the following website. Is it beautiful? No, but it works. So if I go on recency last year and then I go on source, let's say archive, and I sort by date and I see something like, can you look for every single study or any form of documentation around prompting using emojis only over the past year? So if I send this over, it's going to have some cute little animation, but behind the scenes, we're just using the same API. And because we have those parameters that are referred to like recency, as well as source for academic source, it can come back instantly and we can now expand this, look at it. And it's not again, a groundbreaking app, but it took one single prompt to put it together. And what's cool is if you want to take the exact same thing, or you want to take a variation of it, look up emoji prompting. Okay. All right, let's do prompting. And then let's do in the past month, you're basically creating your own mini Google search. Now, can it come with biases and mistakes? Absolutely. But it's the fact that you can do this now almost instantaneously. And in terms of cost, on average, it's $5 per thousand requests. But naturally, it's going to depend on what kind of requests those are, including the types of model you're using with that request. And you'll see right here, we get links to archive and we click on this. It walks through the key findings. Obviously we can go more detail and say, you know what, return back the entire article or a link we can click on and we can go wild with this. But just to show you the power of having a very solid, easy to use API with things like automations and vibe coded apps. So hopefully that shows you the power of this brand new API. That's definitely imperfect, but a big step change in terms of the different search APIs we've had this far. If you want to replicate anything I put together in this video, I've made all the assets, including the automations and the workflows available to you in the second link in the description below. And if you like content like this and the way I break things down into digestible and easy to understand ways, then check out the first link in the description where I do all kinds of experiments every single day inside my early AI adopters community. I'll see you in the next one.